we're continuing our coverage of an international crisis playing out in our backyard. Good evening, everybody. I'm Darren Perrin. And I'm Kat Villianzoni. Security is getting stepped up in Canada's capital as President Joe Biden is in Ottawa this evening for a two-day meeting with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Among the topics they plan to discuss, what to do about the surge of immigrants both into the U.S. and Canada through points along the Vermont and New York borders with Quebec. Now, in part one of our special report, we told you about a record number of immigrants caught crossing into the U.S. in our region. The U.S. Border Patrol says the majority are from Mexico and Central America. And like those crossing at the southern border, they are seeking a better life in the U.S. At the same time, nearly 40,000 immigrants crossed from the U.S. into Canada last year at the unofficial border crossing on Roxham Road in Champlain, New York. Roxham Road is the only border crossing of this kind in all of Canada, funneling all asylum seekers to the small town of Champlain, New York. Catherine Huntley brings us that part of the story. Well, it might look like just about any other rural road here in upstate New York. However, it's anything but. It's Roxham Road, and it's the unofficial border crossing where tens of thousands of refugees and asylum seekers are coming each year, desperate to get into Canada in hopes of a better life there. They come from countries all over the world with only the possessions they can carry or drag. Families line up, nervous and emotional about the next step, ready to be arrested the moment they cross into Canada. If you cross here, you will be arrested. Crossings at Roxham Road have increased sharply in the last few years as refugees seek an easier path to asylum and support services north of the border. This January saw nearly 5,000 people crossing. That's more than double the number in January 2022. There are people like Navla Bango, who says he's escaping violence in Angola. I've gone one month and two weeks traveling. I was walking a week, sometimes taking the bus, and then walking again. Almost everyone we spoke to had a similar story of a long, arduous journey just to get to the border. El es un largo. The process is a little bit long. We've been traveling for three months, walking up north like everyone does through the Mexican desert. Roxham Road itself looks like just about any other rural road in upstate New York. Over the years, the Canadian government has added to the facilities to accommodate the influx of people. Neighbors on the road have seen the very real struggle of those trying to reach the border. I see one lady and she had just a little top and this was back in January and I, you know, I cried mercy. Paul Langlois has a front row view. People want to be where it's free. With one of the closest properties to the border, to what Canada estimates is 150 to 250 people every day. I'm just going to grab some here. Community members in the tight-knit town of Champlain, New York, are aware of this plight. One woman who doesn't want to be shown gathers winter gear she distributes each day at the border. This day, she outfitted a French-speaking man who was wearing dress clothes with no coat, reassuring him in French as to what's coming next. Moments of humanity, which neighbors down the road in the village of Champlain have seen firsthand. We're having chocolate cake. Ooh. and do their part by knitting each day to outfit those crossing the border with warm clothes. Why shouldn't we help them? It could be your mother, your sister, your brother. I just feel compelled to help them. They're coming because they have to leave the country and they come with whatever they can bring. But I just, I, just, I feel very good that I can help them. Most refugees arrive in the North Country via bus from New York City to Plattsburgh. This is my passenger. And then find a taxi or driver to take them to the border 30 minutes away. Even after sunset, the flow of people desperate to get into Canada doesn't stop. Long after dark, people are going into the facility and getting searched, hoping that they will be able to find a better, more prosperous life in Canada. Hey, on this day, the bus with many on it arrived after dark, resulting in a bottleneck at the border. We met migrants from South America, Central America, Asia, and Africa. One person we spoke with says he is fleeing Colombia's largest cartel. 
Alejandro Guzman says he wants to work, pay taxes, and live a normal life in Canada. The Delgolfo clan threatened me at my job, threatening me to take something, and I didn't want to. Because of my religion, I didn't want to. I had to get out. Vincente Escobar is fleeing Venezuela. I am politically persecuted. Sadly, I had to leave first and then get my family out. Escobar has been in the U.S. for a year and a half after crossing the southern border. You guys go have a safe trip, guys. Like many other migrants, he's tried to live in the U.S. He's leaving after finding the U.S. immigration system nearly impossible to navigate. He says it's too complicated to get a work visa and social services. It was a common complaint we heard from people traveling north. I did not prosper. There was no way or possibility to be able to get it. And that's not what I want for myself. I'm looking for stability. I'm a working man. I'm a person who wants to get ahead, that's trying to get a better life, and I cannot get that in Venezuela. Despite the unimaginable struggles so many at the border have been through, there's still hope for the future. In Canada, I want a stable life. I want a dignified life, a decent life. And I think I can make it happen there. We reached out to the Premier of Quebec. His spokesperson said the province is completely overwhelmed. They say Quebec receives 99.1% of all irregular arrival in Canada thanks to Roxham Road. However, they have exceeded their capacity to receive these migrants, saying they don't have the resources to help anymore. Specifically, the public services that the province pays for, such as housing, education, and food banks. They are requesting the country redistribute the asylum seekers to other provinces and to renegotiate the immigration agreement between the U.S. and Canada so they can better control how many people are coming into Canada. In the studio, Catherine Huntley, Channel 3 News. Catherine, thank you for that.